Hello everybody, so in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the Bowl iTap Pro. Now full disclosure, I have been sent this product for free for the purpose of doing a review video, but I will be giving my honest opinion on it and going through all of the pros and cons of this system in as much detail as possible. So if you'd like to learn more about this universal counter pressure bottle filling system, stick around for the rest of the video and we'll go through all of the information. So the iTap Pro uses the standard counter pressure faucet or tap system that I've reviewed in a previous video that I'll link up at the top. The difference here is it's housed in a heavy duty stainless steel stand, which incorporates this spring loaded clamp system for fixing the bottles in place. This combined with the universal fitting on the iTap itself means that you should be able to use this with any size or type of glass bottle that you want to fill. Although it still only fills one bottle at a time, the bowl website states that you should be able to do up to 180 bottles per hour using this setup. Being a counter pressure filling system, the beer can be packaged fully carbonated without sediment and excluding as much oxygen ingress as possible during the filling process. So let's go through some of these features in a little bit more detail. The iTap connections and functionality are the same as the standard unit. So we have three barbed connections, the top one being the beer in, then we have the gas line in, and then we have the waste line out. I've added a little bit of silicon onto the barbs for the gas and the beer lines here just to make it easier to connect the hoses. You've probably already noticed the LED strip on the back of the stand which helps to show the fill level on bottles, which is a nice touch I think. The height of the bottle stand can be adjusted by removing these two bolts at the back by way of the wing nuts. On the front we've got a clear perspex safety guard which can be adjusted for height to match the stand itself. This will obviously protect the user in the event of any bottles bursting which seems like a sensible idea to me if you're going to be packaging a large volume of glass bottles under pressure. The bottles are held in place by way of this spring-loaded platform at the base, which you lower by pressing down on the lever, as you can see. This pushes the bottle upwards into this rubber cup, which houses the nozzle for the eye tap. The concave design on the underside of this should mean that it will be compatible with almost any bottleneck, whether that be crown caps, flip tops, corks, or even screw top growlers and that kind of thing. So hopefully that's given you a good overview of the features of this system. What we'll do now is go through setting it up and actually using it to fill some bottles to test it out. Setup wise, the first thing I would recommend doing is rotating the eye tap slightly in the frame to make it easier to access and connect the gas and beer lines at the back. The barbs on the back here are a touch too big for 3 8 beer and gas lines, so I've used a little bit of silicon to effectively create a kind of push fit fitting. Ideally, it would be good to see these barbs replaced with John Guest fittings. So once it's all hooked up, we have the top connection going to the beer keg. The gas line is split between the regulator and the beer keg itself to keep those balanced. And the waste line can just go down to a bucket or drain to catch any overflow from the filling. When you are positioning the eye tap ready for use, I would strongly recommend that you either screw or bolt it down to your worktop or secure it to a wider base plate. Otherwise, the amount of force that you need to exert on this lever is likely to wobble or even tip over the unit. When you are adjusting the height of the stand with these bolts, you need to set it so that the top of the bottle sits about here relative to the nozzle. This will make it easy to get the bottles in and out, but also keep a tight seal around the bottle neck. So let's give it a quick test run with a standard 500ml glass bottle. After we've clamped the bottle in place, we're going to give it a quick purge with the gas. I always do this a couple of times just to be sure. Then we're going to charge it with gas one more time before opening the eye tap so that the beer can flow in. We can control this flow by adjusting the gas valve on the side of the eye tap. So as you can see, the filling process with this is very simple and straightforward, much like the original iTap. It's taken me just over 30 seconds to fill this one bottle, but this was one of my first goes at using it. So with a bit more practice, I'm sure that a bit of time could be shaved off of that. I think 180 bottles per hour is probably feasible if you're filling 330s, but you do have to factor in time to seal or cap the bottles as well. So apart from my decidedly out of practice technique with the bottle capper here, this was a really nice easy process to get the bottle filled and sealed up. So next I thought I'd try out a couple of different bottle types with the system. First up was a swing top bottle. As you can see, the neck on this is a similar height to the other 500ml glass bottle, but it's got a slightly thicker, more rounded profile around the bottle neck itself and a slightly narrower opening as well. As you can see, the ITAP handled it perfectly, so it sealed really well and there were no issues filling this one up at all. 
One thing to note with both the fills so far is that there's been no beer lost down the waste tube at all, so it's been really efficient and basically zero losses as long as you're being careful not to overfill the bottles. So next up was the Growler. This is a three and a half pint vessel with a screw top lid on it. And it's got the wider neck and opening at the top, as you can see. This one is from my local bottle shop and tap room called Beerfly. I think this type is fairly typical of the sort of thing that you might see in those kind of commercial settings. So I've shortened the footage a little bit on this one just to make it a bit less tedious, but the fill time was just over a minute, which was still pretty quick, I thought. You can see the foam came right up to the top of the bottle at the end there, and a little bit did go down the waist tube, but there's still very little lost. And actually, it's quite a good thing to cap on top of the foam if you can, uh, just to make sure there's no oxygen ingress into the bottle at the end of the filling. So that's three different types of bottle that we've managed to successfully fill there with very little mess or fuss. Uh, I think the versatility of this unit is definitely a big plus point, which can certainly have some uses in a commercial setting, but even on a home brew level, I would find it quite useful being able to fill um, the growler up from my kegs, whether that be to take to a home brew club meeting or, or whatever else I want to do. So one more quick test with a plastic PET type bottle. Now, let me just make it clear this unit is not designed to work with these types of bottles. And you can see here exactly why. So obviously the pressure from the spring on the platform is too great and causes the bottle to collapse. So I figured I would just put this in the video because I thought I'm likely to get questions about using it with plastic bottles. And you can technically still manage to get beer into them, but obviously it's not ideal. And the potential for the bottle collapsing after you've filled it with beer and then spraying beer everywhere is pretty high. So I would definitely not recommend it. So obviously if you're mainly intending to fill up plastic bottles, then you would be much better off with one of the original ITAP designs, which doesn't use the spring-loaded platform. So time for some final thoughts on the ITAP Pro. I think it's done a great job as far as filling the different types of bottles up. It is really versatile and I think that's going to be very useful, particularly in the commercial settings that it is mainly intended for. I'm a big fan of the original ITAP, and I think the whole counter pressure filling method is a great way to ensure that the beer stays in great condition and can be packaged with a set level of carbonation without having to worry about bottle conditioning or other processes like that, which can be a bit hit and miss. Now, the pricing of this unit is going to put it out of reach of your typical home brewer, to be honest. But I think that is reflected in the build quality and the robustness of the unit. So the stand, um, all made of stainless steel and all of the component parts seem to be of a very good quality and should last really well in a commercial environment where it's going to get used quite heavily. If I was going to suggest some areas for improvement, the only things that really bugged me a little bit were the method for adjusting the height of the stand and also the fittings on the back of the eye tap. So for the height adjustment bolts, they're just a little bit slow and tedious to take those in and out when you're adjusting the height. So some sort of quick release uh, type option there would be really good, I think, just to speed up uh, adjusting the height of the unit. And the fittings on the back of the eye tap, the barbs just being in a size that would fit the kind of tubing uh, or lines that are used in the, the area that it's being sold to. So I think the barbs that are on it are probably metric sized and we would want some imperial ones or even better the option to have john guest fittings on the back of it so that you can just pop the gas and beer line straight in uh, i think in the majority of settings uh, whether that be commercial or homebrew people would be looking for three eighth line fittings for those other than that, it is still obviously a manual single bottle filler, so it is limited in terms of batch sizes that could be packaged in a reasonable amount of time. That said, I think even larger breweries could find uses for this when packaging pilot or experimental brews. That's not a criticism as such, just pointing out it would only be viable up to a certain level of production. And this doesn't affect its use for growler or bottle filling in the taproom or bottle shop scenario, where I think this product is probably most suited. The price, which is currently discounted if bought direct, currently works out to around £630. 
which is clearly not going to be realistic for many home brewers. However, when compared to similar products for the commercial setting, such as the Pegas Craft Tap Free, this still represents very good value for money and delivers almost identical functionality, albeit in a slightly more rugged design. So overall, I think it's an excellent product. There are some areas for improvement for sure, but on balance, it's still a well-designed and implemented tool for the job. If you've got any further questions about the ITAP, then please feel free to post them in the comments. And otherwise, thank you again to Bowl for giving me the opportunity to review this product. And I'll see you all again soon. I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know? Uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino, if you're not into the whole brevity thing.